Myanmar or Burma, as it is formerly known, is promoted in tourist brochures as a Far Eastern paradise. Before this, the country spent almost 30 years in isolation. The Golden Pagodas cannot disguise the fact that Burma is one of the poorest countries in Asia. A lack of nutrition, low level of education, high inflation and disease at the order of the day. The military rule the country with an iron fist. The propaganda posters warn against the government critics. They are regarded as traitors and opponents and must be eliminated. Also the military junta once. In 1988 they showed their power at a protest at a university in Rangoon. 800 students were shot and over 3,000 members of the opposition subsequently murdered. Two years later, the government allowed the first free elections. The opposition party, the NDL, won with 80%, but still those in power refused to recognise the will of the people. Aung San Suu Kyi leads the regime's critics. She is the daughter of the national hero, Aung San, who led Burma to independence from British rule. The Nobel Peace Prize winner has once again been arrested by security forces. The 58-year-old is said to be held in military prison in Rangoon. She has repeatedly called for a tourism boycott. Every dollar which flows into the pockets of the military only prolongs the suffering of the people. The generals are obviously afraid of a new wave of mass protests of the 80s and have been surprised by the enduring popularity of Aung San Suu Kyi. Pro-government hit squads attack NDL supporters. Several people are said to have been killed. The street in front of Aung San Suu Kyi's house is blocked. Visitors are all sent away. All the NDL offices in the country have been sealed off and the universities have once more been closed. We are not allowed to film even the mausoleum. We were led away. The monument is dedicated to the opposition leader's father, who was shot in 1947. The population fears that history could repeat itself. In the newspaper, a disappointed NDL party member reports on Aung San Suu Kyi's journey through the north of the country. This is officially blamed for the new conflict. Burmese are a poor nation. The long isolation and socialist mismanagement have led the country into economic ruin. Two thirds of the 50 million Burmese live off the land. The farmers have to sell the government a proportion of their harvest to knock down price. On the waterways run ferries ready for the scrapping. Whole families spend their wretched lives in boats. The government does as good as nothing to alleviate the poverty of the people. Burmese man told us of his brother who is in prison due to his political activities. He hopes that the military government will soon end. Every discussion with foreigners is dangerous for the Burmese. We are constantly asked about the purpose of our travels and had to always write down our passport number. Among the young, resentment of those in power is especially widespread. The only people who publicly make fun of the government are the Moustache Brothers. However, this political joke can also be punishable as experience. In January 1996, when one of the brothers appeared before the leader of the opposition, he was sentenced on the spot to seven years in prison. Papa Lei can now return home after five years and seven months. Papa Lei is a top two, and they begin a story. So every so a place, a present or halibha, and also the beating, the torture, like that. Now they're afraid because uh, the liberation photo, and there's every supporter on the road that they pick up one by one. That's why you sleep night time, you're afraid, not the dark, midnight, and uh, scared to sleep, uh, afraid to sleep. Everyone. <laughs> the 
SOAP makes free use of the nation's workforce. Every Burmese has to work for the prosperity of the country according to the government's requirements to pay a fine. Actually, they have forced labor. All of us have been accustomed to such, such hardship because we, as you see, most of Myanmar people are very poor. When should they sanction more? They, they should do more sanction because uh, 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 some of the people may have difficulty in somewhat extent. But this does not matter because the, all the people in Myanmar have been suffering a lot of hardships. Officially, the average monthly wage is $20. However, many earn less. Everyday life is characterized by corruption and bribery. The far too big army swallows huge amounts of money. And as a result, many families cannot find the money to send their children to school. The pressure is so tense. All the, all the people look afraid of the authority. But when, they, when something happens, they get united. And at that time, they dare to fight. They dare to die. Bochi is a former political prisoner. Over the border in Thailand, he shows us photos he'd never be able to show in Burma. Over 100,000 are in prison, from which over 1,200 alone are political prisoners. The pictures of the students who were so brutally shot down in June 1988 by a special police unit were shown around the world. Not many people are familiar with these photos of the prisoners. My name is Nguyen Jo, 6745 stroke C, so in insane prison and Nguyen prison. The total is over eight years in prison. The 33-year-old was able to flee to Thailand. My name is Bo Ji, 2874 stroke C. I was in insane prison and Manali prison. I was in Eastern prison and Thaori prison, totally seven years and three months in prison. Foot shackles and handcuffs had to be worn constantly. Yeah, as soon as so we were, I was arrested, I was, uh, my face was covered up with like this. So because, so they don't want other people to see me. Also, they don't, they don't want me to see other people like this kind of position. But my understanding is there is kinds of psychological torture. With this exhibition, 10 former political prisoners are trying to show the world that human rights in Burma are most brutally disregarded. A former prisoner and well-known student activist said, in Burma there are only two prisons, one with prison walls and one without, namely the whole country. The question remains, for how much longer?